Amen. Amen. Let me share the word of God with a few minutes with you. And uh, let's read Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Let's read only verse 1. Surely God is good to Israel, even to such as are pure in heart. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was reading these scriptures. Um, you can go home and read the whole Psalm 73. Psalm 73. You really find that. Is edifying. If you read verse 17, it says, Until I went into the sanctuary of God and considered their latter end. This man is David who is speaking. If you read, you find that in his day, he was worrying about why wicked prosper and Christians suffer. By then, people were following Judaism. You could see the people following the law. Of Moses. But still, they were under people who are not even <coughs> worshiping God. On that verse, he says, Until I went to the sanctuary. Until I went to the sanctuary. I found where they will end. You know, if you read scriptures, you realize that you can admire people who are going nowhere. Because you can judge people by the standards of life or by what they are having. But when you read verse 1 there, the Bible says, Bible. Pure heart and Israel are like one. As God has chosen Israel, He also chooses everyone who is having a pure heart. Tassaban, my friend, is your heart pure? That's the heart that the Lord is searching. The moment is pure, he is searching. Just write pure heart. In Titus 1, verse 15 to 16. I found when we read verse 12, it says, talk about the grace of God. But when it goes down, it began to show us the importance of a pure heart. Let's read verse 15. In your in Peri. Verse 15. Vachila Fadiche, Kijotse, Kaobane, Vachila Fach, Vachila Fachi, Vachila Fetch, Hopolo, Lilitualo. Let me read it in Amplified Bible. It says, To the pure, all things are pure, but to the corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Amen. Both their mind and their conscience are corrupted. 16. They profess to know God. Uh, but by their actions they deny and disown him. Amen. So you can see that God is not a matter of talking about. It's a matter of the heart. Our heart is our communication point. The Bible shows that corruption is coming from the heart. 
Bible is coming from the heart. Unbelieving is coming from the heart. Also, it affects our mind and our conscience. Our conscience dies. To the extent that when we sin, we repent for the wife, we continue. Can you see that the moment when a sin stays in you, you fight it until you are tired fighting. You can confess it with your heart. With a heart of fear. But if now your conscience is not of saying, I want a heart that will please God, very soon you'll confess and go back. I don't know if you're hearing me. So God wants a pure heart. He doesn't want a wrong thing to fall inside your heart. Because it affects your mind and deals with you in a wrong way. When I was reading this, I found in verse 16, from 6 to 13, is where the Lord spoke with Samuel. I said, Samuel, Samuel, don't look at their countenance. I look unto the heart. I was worried a lot when I read the scripture. Because I've read it several times. But I found that we may not be aware that our actions around us they don't matter before God. Because God is looking beyond our actions. What is the reason behind your doings? That is the intent of the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. my friends. God is not looking at you. He is looking in your heart. He is looking where? In your heart. So the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse 9 to 10, it's only the Lord that searched that. Heart. We are limited because we look at the people. We look at the people according to our understanding. But we need to go beyond. That was my friend. Our God goes beyond. Jeremiah said, a heart is deceitful. It's full of deceit. Who can know it? Except the Lord. This is the time that we open up our hearts and we allow the wrong things to be uprooted. I don't know if you are hearing that. And the Lord of the heart will choose you because of your heart. If he chose Israel, he will choose the pure. I don't know if you are hearing that. So he won't look at the Israel. Israel outside. You can be Israel inside. In Proverbs 22 verse 11. He says, he who loves purity and the pure in heart and the gracious in speech because of the grace of his lips will have a king as a friend. There are things are limiting people so that they must not know you. It's your heart. Deal with your heart. That's my friend. Deal with your heart. Can you deal with your heart? Can I tell you this? That day when this man was looking on people looking the way they are appearing. This man of God was just looking and conclude to say truly this one is chosen. That day 
God was teaching Samuel something. That you will never know anybody until you ask me. That day God was telling Samuel. I learned a lot from that day. When I read concerning Samuel who was just looking on people who were humbling themselves and continue the inside there. there was a problem. It's also a lesson that God taught me. I trusted people I'm not supposed to trust. And it is also a mistake. This is the mistakes that we normally have. Some people can humble themselves but there are things in their hearts that can really surprise me. I don't know if you're hearing me. If it happened to Samuel, judging people by the cover, it can happen to everybody. This is the time that we need to look around us. Otherwise, we'll be limited somewhere. Your limitations are coming from your heart. I don't know if you're hearing me. Here you will see a heart as a problem. If we deal with our hearts, there is nothing that will stop us. Can you stop looking on what you don't have? You have a heart. Deal with it. You have your own heart. You have your own secrets. Deal with them. Look here when Jesus said, It's not what you eat that defiles you. He was not saying, Eat everything. He was saying, The intents of your actions are coming from inside you. The reason why why you can be damaged, challenged, or stopped is because of what you are thinking from your heart. I don't know if you are hearing me. When you can be defined, it means your resemblance or what you are created for can be challenged and you become what you are not. There are some people here today when I am preaching, God will restore them to their original purpose. Because it's when you deal with your heart and you tarnish some things and remove some certain things which are not needed you will be restored to be yourself. You don't need your friends. You don't need your pastor. You need yourself. Because the heart is in you. The heart is in you. Don't allow your heart to be defined. I don't know if you are hearing me. Say, tell me, what is it that is defiling your heart? And the person say what? Because many times, when we look at ourselves, we justify ourselves than others. Can I tell you this? All your actions, tell them all your actions, all your ability are required from your heart. When we look at you, the way you walk, the way you do, is because of your heart. If you want to see that, now you can't read the Bible and understand it. It means there's something wrong in your heart. If your prayer life is going down, check your heart. Don't check people around you. Check your heart. Check what you are beginning to love most. Check what you are talking with. Whom you are talking with. When I, was this message, I was so troubled when I get this message. Because I was told this thing when I was in that can you see why Charis people will suffer? They just accept everybody. They cannot judge right. 
Even the people that people are saying are wrong, they are friends. Faith comes by hearing to your heart. They are hearing many, many things. That comes to their heart. When they pray, nothing happens. I don't know if you are hearing me. That's what I my friend. Who's your friend? It's better. Many ways define you. Many, many ways you are hearing affecting your heart. And when you want to pray, you can pray. There is someone today that God wants to choose here. Is when you confess out something wrong and you leave it out from your heart. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. In 1 John chapter 1. If we go to that scripture, 1 John chapter 1. Maybe you can read verse 8 there. It says what? Well. Verse 8. Oh, verse 9. 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 Verse this verse is verse telling us that we must not just say what we don't mean. We are deceiving ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. I want everybody who's hearing me today to know that the reason why you have limitation. You are speaking what you don't mean. If you read 2 Timothy there, just Chapter 2, 20 to 22. Chapter 2, 20 to 22. The Bible says, in the house, there are vessels. Purify yourself. yourself. To be a vessel of honor. Purify yourself. To be a vessel of honor. If there are things you need to talk and they are necessary, put yourself aside. Purify, sanctify yourself. Set yourself aside so that God will use you later for bigger things. You know, I was uh, looking at the life of John. John never died when he was 33 years. John, uh, he never reached that age. Uh, John, the Baptist, John, he never reached Bukulu that age. Bukulu. Because one day when Jesus was in the ministry, John and Jesus were of the same age. So one day, he saw what was happening and he was offended. He began to say, I'm in prison. And this guy, I'm the one who introduced him. And then from there, he was questioning why is he the same man that I introduced? Why is he allowing this for me to stay in prison? And the Bible says he sent his two disciples. He was, he was in prison. But he was still having disciples. Because followers can follow you even when you are in prison. And the Bible says when he sent those people, they went to Jesus and said, Jesus, are you sure you are the one? We have been sent by the one who usher you to the ministry. If you are the one, why are you living here? Jesus never answered. He just healed people and do miracles there. And say, this man is offended. Please go and tell him what you saw. When they reached there, they said, hey, there's something we saw. What is it that was happening in the heart of John? 
What is it that was happening in the heart of John? John was worrying because he was in prison. And he could not die in prison. But he was afraid. Later we began to hear the girl. He just danced. And the king says, ask anything. And the mother says, hey, this girl is offended. He can I tell you this? God might have seen that if John can stay for long, he will die. I don't know if you're hearing me. He will die and go to hell. To save him. Now that he knows his Messiah, it's better he come home. Some limitations in our lives are coming from our hearts. John was was not supposed to die. He was supposed to have said, though I finish my ministry, I can speak better about Jesus. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can I tell you this? You will never die. You will see the people you have introduced to business prospering there will be blessings to you in the name of Jesus. What is important is to deal with your heart. Can I tell you this? When I was hearing this, I heard this. In the ministry, there are some people that must die off so that other people must move forward. They don't go to hell because their hearts are not right. Be flexible in your heart. So that God can use you to anybody. Remove jealousy, remove everything. When somebody is beautiful, he's beautiful. When somebody does something good, he's doing something good. Can you remove something wrong in your heart? You need a pure heart. Pure heart. Where you don't have anybody in your heart. Where you appreciate everybody. When somebody do the best, congratulate that person. I don't know if you're hearing me. You know, one time I just felt that the time when I was going to America, I just felt when I was there that there are some people who don't want me to come back. <laughs> they wished the flower chain to fall down. And the question is, these are pastors. I can give you an example. I was in Kwatwa. You can ask what happened with the security. Since we are there, we are a problem to pastors. What is going to deny us to enter heaven? is our hearts. When you look at your brother, congratulate him. Tell him, when you look at your brother or sister, congratulate him. You can rather be small and you lift your neighbor. If you see someone better, don't fight that particular person. I don't know if you are hearing me. That's what I say, how is your heart? Why are you short-tempered? Why are you worried too much? Clean your heart today. There's anger in your heart. There's worry. Some things happen for you so that good things will come. I just thank God for failure that has happened to you. I thank God for rejection that has happened to you. It's good. Whatever that happens, it's good to those who are called by God. Don't defile your heart by any situation. Remove everything. If someone says you are stupid, thank God you are stupid. I don't know if you're hearing me. When somebody says you want to be promoted, you must thank God. As long as you are breathing, nobody gave you that oxygen. Deal with your heart. This year, I need Christians who deal with their hearts. They speak from right conscience. They do what is right. If you believe, shout hallelujah. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Ask your neighbor. I say, why your heart? He's having hands. You will hear somebody say, I'm holding him or her by heart. I'm holding him or her by my heart. Look at this verse now. 
In Matthew 5 verse 8. Matthew 5 8. Blessed are pure in hearts. Amen. For they shall see God. Amen. See God. I want to see God in my situation. I want to see God. Pure hearts, you will see God. You will see visitation. You will see God. Listen, not long here, I was shocked to find that there are people who are seeing mighty things here. What we cannot see. You know what blinds our eyes? The reason why we are not prophets today. The reason why you dream when you sleep, you dream. And you see somebody chasing you by an ex. Chasing you. And you see somebody chasing you by an ex. You find that in your dream you can't even run. It's your heart. The reason that you sleep and you see yourself being on top of the mountain and somebody will come nicely at the back and push you over. And you see yourself falling from the top there. When you wake up, you find yourself on top of the bed. The problem is your heart. Eh, your heart has got a serious problem. You'll have nightmares. You'll find so dreaming somebody holding a knife towards you. And the person coming closer to you. Coming closer and you'll be screaming and shouting. And the person will be having a very high speed. And you will just see yourself running by slow motion. And the person running so quickly coming to you. There's nothing that you dream that will you come to You don't see God at work. You don't see. You only dream nightmares. When you are inside the car. When you have bought a new car. And you are not working. You just dream yourself having bought a car. We drive like this. When you are still driving, we are like going home. When you are turn, turning on the last street to home, your car starts rolling. It rolls and rolls and rolls. And you open your mouth wide open and scream. When you wake up, you find that you are still sleeping in your three quarter bed. The problem is your heart is not good. You will always dream matata. You won't see God. You will never see you God. You see cases. You will see the tuago. When you are sleeping like this, you will dream a lot of money around you. And you're holding it by your arms and your fingers, just putting it through. It's long I've been here. They will take you away and say, come see your house. And you see a very high, beautiful mansion. When you are still counting the money. When you are still counting your money. When you open your mouth. And you find yourself doing like that. Your heart is the problem. Whatever you are dreaming will never come to pass. Whatever you are dreaming you will dream the right but thing. And God will never do it for you. God, if I did, just because if he can just do it, you will go on and walk on top of the heads of people. You will sit on top of people. If you have a company, if you can have a company, hey, you will insult people. Because your heart is the problem. Thank God you are poor. Thank God you are poor. Work with your own heart. 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 Work with your heart. You have a problem. You have problems. Look here. Psalm 24.3.5. I want to finish. Psalm 24. 24. Psalm 24. Read from 3 to 4. Who may ascend unto the mountain of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. 
who has not lifted up his soul to what is false. No, has shown deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from God of his salvation. He shall receive the blessings of the Lord. Amen. That's my friend. Who will ascend today? Say it's me. I will ascend. Listen. It, it takes your pure heart for you to go to the next level. You shall receive the blessings of the Lord. You know, um, if all of us here we can have a pure heart. All of us. We are going to be a force that God will use. I saw some people who have got a very cruel heart. One woman came to me and said, Pastor, I didn't come alone here to see you one on one. I came with my boyfriend. I want him to marry me. Prophesy marriage. Prophesy marriage. Pastor prophesying. The moment when I sit here, don't call him first, call him later. Or let me come first. And then later, when tell him that he must marry me. Prophesy me. Prophesy And I say, why? You know, I gave him sickness. But he doesn't know. Always when he wants to go to the doctor, I stop him because I know. He doesn't know that I gave him HIV. You know, I was looking at this woman. She looked at me. I said, I wish I had a shampoo. Yeah. I speak the truth. Because look at this person who knows the truth. And give someone disease. And still tell the pastor prophesy. There's no fear of God. There are some people who are so cruel. They don't even fear God. They come to our churches. They sing with us. They can deceive you. And they know what they're doing. And devil is using them. But today. I cut wrong friendship around you. I cut wrong friendship around you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. They are here around you. You don't even know them. You don't even know these people. Some of them you are helping them. Tomorrow they are the ones who will kill you. Some of them you are trying to take care of them. If you want to see, they are not real. The day they get their jobs, the day they get their business, they will never know. You will never know. You will never see them again. They are there because they are parasites. They are there to eat from you. They are just eating from you. Eating from you. From today, I Connect you with the wrong people. They are affecting your character. I stop them today in the name of Jesus. You don't need them. You don't need them. Let me give you an example. 
when God was speaking with Abraham, Abraham, Abraham now I so want you to go and leave this people. Abraham was saying, ah, me, Abraham, I'm very old. God said, I will give you a child. I'm old. If now I'm old, who's going to take inheritance of me? Let me take Lot. Let me take this guy. When they were in the road, the Bible says, this guy become rich. I call him this guy. This guy become rich. And Abraham become rich. Now the servants become to fight. He's the one who took him. He was the one who was supposed to reprimand this people. And say, hey, hey, hey. Ah, ah, ah. You don't know Abraham. You. I will chase you out. He, he took me, this man. It's because of his God. That is why you people, you are eating. So now, why are you doing this? But the Bible says, they fought to extend that there was no solution. Until Abraham said, you are a child of my brother. I can't fight you. I don't want to defile my heart. Choose where you can go. Can you see a green land? Can you see a dry land? If you choose there, I'm not fighting you. I will go there. He was honest with his heart. And this guy, because he was there for benefits, when you see green fields, he just say, yeah, this time I'm better than my I'm better than Abraham. He didn't know that Abraham doesn't go by sight. He's a man of faith. He said, though there is dry, I'm going there. God knows my heart. God knows my heart. This guy took his friends and all those slaves. He went to Sodoma and Gomorrah. And he reached there. He was tormented there. Even his children could not marry there. Even himself, he ended up sleeping with his children. Abomination was happening. But Abraham said, let me go to dry land. There is God who knows my heart. Even if it's dry one day, there will be green grass there. There is God who knows my heart. People come to us because they see things around us. When I lose, but there is God who knows my heart. There are some people who are here. They have lost everything. Things are tough around them. But there is God who knows your heart. I'm here to tell you. The same God who took you out from Egypt will take you to Canaan. I see you going there. I see you going there. And I'm telling you, you reach there. The same God who makes you to reach that age. He will bless you. He will never leave you. He's around you. He's with you. He will lead you through. You are here today. That God who knows your heart, the same God who knows your heart, is lifting you. Though so there was a delay, but from now on, the same God who knows your pain, the same God who knows your tolerance, the same God who knows your heart, Heart is the one today that is raising you, is raising you to a higher level. If you believe, shout hallelujah. It's God who knows my heart. Let them talk. But one day is one day. Let them try to fight me. But one day is one day. He knows my heart. If he knows your heart, today I speak those open in front of you. In front of you. Those are open.
knows your heart. He knows your heart. He knows your heart. You won't be defeated. You won't fall. He knows your heart. He understands your heart. He's taking you somewhere. He knows your heart. I say he knows your heart. He knows your heart. I see God lifting you. I see God lifting you. If you believe, shout hallelujah.